Uh, waiting for the guests to arrive before the wedding. I got a call from Dion. And Jen over there. All the way down from Pumalonga. Rochelle. Good friend arriving. Yes, look very smart, Libby. Very smart. Yes. Tangle arriving and Mac from the Chapman's Peak Hotel. Yes. <laughs> really, it was, it was not a, it was a super thing to do. It doesn't matter. It's one. Let's see you jump on. Swing, swing. Where's Granny? Where's the fish still fit on? Say hello, Granny. Yeah. Romy and Heather arriving. Oh, I thought I'd check this one. You're so low slung. You can hide. Mm -hmm. I wonder, do you know what they are? Aren't they? They're arriving. Yes. And uh, Jane and Dave. Hi. This is where the ceremony is going to take place. And here uh, come some of the guests across the field, past the ducks and the pigs and the sheep and the goats. arriving. The Reverend PC Pig. Now, what have you done to yourself? Andre bonding with the pig. The bee? The bride to arrive. People taking their seats after a few jugs of pims. And they come. What a lovely guru setting for the beautiful bride.
they didn't tent outside Greg and Dion's house. And uh, the first vehicle from the wedding ceremony arriving.
taken out of the box. Besides taking you all for being here, I'd just like to tell you a quick little story about Dion, who has wonderful perseverance and is a, a, a spectacular person. Um, and in fact, I'm also amazed that Greg has got such a high ranking that he now ranks above the horses. <laughs> oh, that's the <laughs> um, many years ago, when we were living in, uh, I can't remember the place, I think it was in Port Elizabeth, Dion and her sister were going to visit the grandparents. And we were sitting at the airport, and Dion and Gangle had all these bags and toys and things, and Carol looked at Dion and said to her, Dion, you can't possibly take all that stuff onto the aeroplane. She said, why not, Mom? She said, well, who's going to carry it for you? And she said, the air stairs, of course. <laughs> and I was still on the balcony, and five minutes later, there were these two little kids <coughs> disappearing. Gain or Aiden, and Dion <laughs> walking, waving, with the air stairs carrying all her back.
clients we just had, very sad, all, both of them, and <laughs> he had to finish coloring in the last one. So. <laughs> Rick was the Marvel's champion at an end. And his, mar his Marvel's collection, which was lovingly and expertly accumulated over many seasons, Marvel seasons, was lost in one day by our little sister Brian. Um, at prep school, Greg played for the first eleven, and he bowled a mean offspin, which he tells me later became a right arm over the wicket. Uh, but I'm going to leave more about that to our best man. Yeah. Um, he was captain of sailing at school and a brilliant windsurfer, flying over the waves and giving us all heart attacks. But I think the moment we were most proud was on sports days where he was wearing his magnificent whites <laughs> and um, was head hurdles judge for three years in a row. <laughs> <laughs> He ran the nice and half marathon, he's paddled the bird twice and the fish once, he shot heat and he gave the massive Cape Point challenge a go, but more of that later. Uh -oh. Dion achieved honors in ballet at nine years old, and at eleven achieved very high marks in bottom dancing. This explains the queen of the salsa. <laughs> uh, but the least we say about Dion's paddling career, possibly the better. <laughs> Um, and mine for that matter. Yes. Just, just fast to say that we still owe lessons. Yes. Um, I'd rather mention her outstanding horse riding ability and her love and affinity for those wonderful animals. And Greg, uh, for just something you need to know that her first real love was a guy called Nash. Music. Yeah, you've Greg and Dion both played musical instruments. Dion um, played the violin. And uh, at Carol says she was very really that it was short lived. Uh, and Greg ate the food, he played the food, but she had to give up when he got his braces and he couldn't. <laughs> um, Dion's, uh, in, in terms of Dion's uh, violin, how can we say, uh, attempt, uh, we can't really blame, blame her because Dion's teacher, Miss Johnston, was in fact a woman who used to be a man. <laughs> And it used to be a racing driver in, in the UK. And she then fled the UK, and was always one step ahead of the law. And we believe that he or she lives in McGregor these days, yeah, and fixes cars. <laughs> so no wonder we didn't really follow that particular <laughs> Right, but entrepreneurship. Both of them are high achievers, as we all know. And Dion, I'm a shaky. Dion owns and runs, with the help of two other dynamic women, a fantastically successful business. Um, this entrepreneurial spirit is, of course, common to Greg too. He started at a young age, breeding uh, rabbits who totally destroyed my mum's precious garden, and selling tummy tooth kits, which he lifted from my dad's dentist's dad's cupboards, and would sell to unsuspecting passers-by on the street. <coughs> and these, the profits would go towards buying cricket kits and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots, lots of sweets. <laughs> At Vosti, uh, when Mum and Mitch were away, uh, he used their house to run a lucrative <laughs> gambling business. Uh, after finishing his BCom at Rhodes, he received his MBA through the Scottish University of Heritage Watt. He owned the American franchise Blimp B in Southern Africa and put five years of hard labour into the business. And although it didn't really take off in South African market, he went and was fraught with difficulties. Greg learned and took a great deal from what happened, which stood him in great stead for the next venture, which is Kitchen, of which Mitchin he are co-founders, and Greg is CEO, and which is dedicated to the teaching of entrepreneurship. A brilliant, brilliant concept and a product about to fly, we really, really hope. Right, organizational ability. Apart from her clients meticulously planned by this, with her personal touch putting her above the competition, Dion is also known for his superb organized wine tours, which include at least six wine farms, outstanding top of the range lunches, beautifully presented in picnic baskets with complimentary wine and champagne, horse and carriage rides, and individualized wine glasses. The Green is also known for his uh, wine roots organization, which occurred at Florence in Waterhouse, 
um, which were organised over six race rooms with plastic cups and a plastic bucket for a spittoon. <laughs> compassion. Dion's compassion for animals, cats, dogs, horses and other human beings is legendary. I wouldn't be surprised if the neighbours' cats and dogs spend the night in their room again too. <laughs> Greg's compassion is possibly a little bit less well known. How many of you, for example, know that he hired an aeroplane to get an aerial view of the river before his first bird marathon, just so that he could help his friends to find the best route? Not. <laughs> or that he had seasick halfway through the Cape Cod Challenge, that he kindly vomited on the back of Bay Beach and chasing away all those pesky baboons. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> problem solving. Now, we've already mentioned a little about Dion's problem solving abilities. It's an area of which both men show great expertise. We know at age nine, Dion figured out the Rubik's Cube. Um, and for Greg, uh, getting more food was, a big, was big on his agenda at school. And this was his way of solving the problem. He put a sign, and I promise you this is the truth, he put a sign above the toilet for the family to read. Attention, everybody. Use less Bob Roll, and then we can eat more food. <laughs> All right. Dion and many others may be wondering why our boy has taken such a long time to take the plunge. But I must tell you that it goes back many years, and it's simply part of who Greg is. Firstly, Mum tells me that where I would quickly climb onto the table to get something and bump my head several times, Greg would very cautiously take his time, slowly and carefully fetch the object, never, never bumping his head. <laughs> Secondly, he's a typical Libra, weighing up all his options, taking a long time over decisions in order to make the right choices. And thirdly, I remember when we were little, pre-1978, Greg and I would take our pocket money and walk to the shops, with Bentley, our faithful daddy, making sure we got over the road safely. He would buy, we would buy our sweets, Greg always seemed to have more than me, Oh, you've got that right. Uh, and then we would go home, and I would impulsively eat every single sweet as quickly as possible. And Greg would choose over and each one, and always, always save the best for last. Well, he's done here. <laughs> he has cautiously made his most important decision and cleverly saved the best for last. We love you, Dion, and we, open, we welcome you with open arms and open hearts into our family. And very, very lastly, just a little thing I read. According to the laws of physics, thought Dad might like this one. Dad, <laughs> um, when we combine two waves of sound or two waves of light, they form a new composite wave. If we combine the vectors or direction of two forces moving together at different angles, they combine to form a new vector, a new force and a new direction. May your composite wave and this new force take you in the direction of your dreams and that you find great joy, happiness, fun, love, and peace together. And I love you both very much. Thank you. I'll be told to pronounce that very key. <laughs> Boise and Dion, hello from the Mud Island, I mean England. A huge congratulations to you both on this very special day. We'll be having a celebration this side of the pond to toast you both on this happy occasion. We wish you more than anything that, that we could be with you in, this, in, in the flesh. Richard and Brady Gerard, and kids, James five, Grace three, and Josh eight months from you. <laughs> Hello, Bert. congrats, Greg. We look forward to seeing you soon. Very brief one from Tanya Hilton Green. And my daughter Pippa, 14 months from okay. <laughs> Congrats, we miss you from Orphan Annie. From Orphan Annie and her son Charles, nine years old, from Grandstar Miss and Cat. Where's Mitch? <laughs> Nothing to do with Dear Greg and Dion, wish you good health, happiness, and a long, loving life together as, as a married couple. May the good days outweigh the bad days. May the prosperous days be always. May your smiles triumph over the frowns. May the shackles that hold back the communication sluice gates be severed. Let not the small issues grow large, and let not the fears turn you into foes. And finally, may the sweet sounds of gurgling, cooing, and gargling, and the not so sweet smiles of nappy fill your home soon. <laughs> I'm sad and sorry that we're not there to share your day with you and offer distant greetings and thanks and hugs to you and all the members. To Greg and Dion, congratulations and much love to Shai and Ben in Israel. Congrats to you and Dion on this wonderful day. Measure well not by the things you have, but by the things that you 
that you have for which you would not take money. With much love, Bernadette and Frank Easton from Atlanta. Have a happy day. We'll be toasted to you on a special occasion under a very cloudy sky. With love, Keith and Aisla from England. Greg and Dion, our heartiest congrats on your wedding day. Our thoughts will be with you. We'll certainly tip a glass this afternoon. Lots of love, Paul, Jennifer Carpenter, and of course, Stephen. <laughs> and Jax, what an awesome speech, huh? <laughs> Just, uh, just a word of advice to everyone here. Um, <laughs> Kelly, can you hear me now? Yeah. yeah. Ke Kelly's the best man, and uh, he'll be speaking shortly after me. And I honestly wouldn't believe a word that comes out of his mouth. And in fact, Lauded Inspector Pizia, who was the chief of the CID in Ramstown about 15 years ago, <laughs> when Kelly was stopped at about 2 in the morning and Inspector Pizia said to him, Listen, young man, what is it exactly that I see in the back of your car? <laughs> we see a lot of road signs that are coming out of the window and are strapped to the roof and what exactly are those road signs doing in your car? <laughs> and Kelly looked at the inspector and said, No, inspector, I'm just trying to help the Grahamstown Traffic Department. <laughs> so please, just don't believe a word that you hear after this. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, little ladies and little gentlemen, I'd like to thank you all from the bottom of my heart and Dion's heart for all of you to, for being here today. It, it means so much to, to, to both of us that you made the effort. Um, we're very, very grateful to be surrounded by such tremendous people and such supportive family. Um, every single one of you here means the world to us. Early one morning in November of 2007, while the sun was coming up, the false bay, I did on bended knee ask you to marry me. It was quite an emotional event and you said yes. Um, it took, took quite a while to then set a date and eventually we decided on the 14th of March. And when I told my friends that it was the 14th of March, they said to me, oh, the Ides of March. Beware <laughs> of the Ides of March. And these were my more cynical divorced friends. <laughs> and so I checked it up on Wikipedia. <laughs> and to you, my more cynical divorced friends, the Ides of March is actually on the 15th of March. It's the middle of March and not the 14th. So, <laughs> to you. <laughs> A special thanks must go to people that have traveled a bit further than most. From Atlanta, Georgia, Kelly, my best man, Hilton Green, you're the man. Thank you very much, Carl, for making the effort. It's a tremendous effort. Um, you've been a great support, and it's been great to have you around just to, to help out. You've been awesome, Brett. And thanks for also organizing the bachelors. It was it was quite a I thought I actually got a quite lively to be honest with you. I, I I was expecting well, I'm not sure what I was expecting, but as a as bull, as a blue bull supporter in the fireman's arms in Cape Town, it's actually not a bad thing. I actually quite <laughs> recommend that you, you you end up having a developing a whole new batch of friends. It's a wonderful experience. <laughs> Uh, it was completely against what I expected, I must tell you, it was quite strange. <laughs> Thanks, Carl. Um, 
from my, my, my good mate Andrew Bolton all the way from Australia, Sydney mate, well done. Good effort on you mate. I'm working on a skinny, I uh, hope you got that right. From the UK, Corin Trickard, Trixie, fantastic effort. Cammy Patterson, Suzanne from the UK, um, Paul Douglas, her busy schedule. Well done, thank you very much. Davey coming, Dad, awesome, really. Fantastic effort to get you. Thanks so much. And for being the MC, tremendous job. <laughs> From Namibia, Nina and Hans. I know Dion is so grateful to have you here and very important parts of, part of her life and going on. And she's very grateful to have you here. I'd especially like to thank my wonderful mother and stepdad Mitch. Uh, for everything you've done over the years, um, they've been married for about 30 years now, if I'm not wrong. Um, and you really have been quite remarkable in supporting me um, and wearing sport over the years. Um, and going back to when they first met in the Eastern Cape, you know, everyone knows about Eastern Cape names. Um, and it's quite interesting that my mom. Muppet, is her nickname, was introduced to Midge by Mark. <laughs> and the way they first met was, um, we, we lived in New Street at the time, and Jax at the time was, I think was 11 or so, and my mom, had, you know, there was this blind date that had been set up, and Midge was invited around, and Jax was there to be... I don't know, the person that kind of checked up on who this person was when he arrived at the front door. And what my mom asked her to do was to, was to look at this guy and, and then to turn to her, who, she was hiding behind the door, and then to, and then to so, sort of go, you know, good or bad. And as, as she opened the door, and Mitch was standing there, and she looked at this guy, and my mom said, sort of looked at her and said, well, what is it? And she went... <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> anyway, that was 30 years ago, and uh, they've, they've been together ever since, and uh, thank you very much to you both. Um, my mom, you've been quite remarkable over the years and the support that you've given me. And uh, one thing that I will take from your time together is your ability to uh, keep a sense of humor, to look at the bright side, especially from Mitch, he's the most positive, positive guy that you'll ever meet. And uh, it's been wonderful working with you, Mitch. And, um, but, but also your ability to kind of nip things in the bud, you know, when, when, uh, when you're having a tough time, you, you're able to kind of resolve it. And something I hope that Dion and I can take through into our, you know, into our life together. So thank you very much for that. Some more people I need to thank from way up north in South Africa. The cousins, Angie, from Botswana from and Elspeth. I don't know if it's quite sure where you are at the moment, but thank you, my cousin. Thank you. Awesome for the to come here. Um, Leanne from Joey's, awesome, thanks guys, so nice to see you and catch up. Paul and Sue Carter from Joe, I know it's scary, but they're staying with the curtains tonight, and I, uh, uh, good luck Anne and Kath and the kids, you know, it's Jen, it's so nice to see you, I know how, how important you are to my mom, and uh, you've been her oldest friend, and it's just remarkable to have you here with us. Um, to Caroline Bailey from Joe as well, Caroline, thank you very much for making the effort. From the top, Debbie and Gerald. Uh, sorry, Gerald's not here tonight. He had to stay for some um, some reason, some reason that were out of his control. But Debs, cousin, uh, we would never have taken this project on. We always knew that we were by our side through this build, and uh, we really thank you for the support and, and the help that you gave us in building this house. We wouldn't have done it without you, so really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Um, Dion's mom, Carol, and sister Gaynor for spending their weekends on hands and knees, literally chipping off 
cement from the floor. You just don't understand how we had to dig deep to get to this to this point. So I promise you, some of you might understand, but it really was a group effort. So thank you, Caroline Gaynor. Um, my mom and stepdad, but also again for helping us complete the place to get to some sort of livable position. Um, Justin Harvey for designing it, half oh, awesome. Um, you know, it's our dream home, and uh, you were part of that. We we, uh, we ended up spending some time in his house on Lakeside, and uh, while well, we built this house through the coldest, wettest winter that you can imagine in the Western Cape, I promise you, you have no idea how cold it was. But uh, we, we pulled through, and uh, we were very uh, beaten. He's not here tonight. All right. <laughs> to mow the lawn, to put the push mower, and enjoy it all time. Stand up. Uh, Jim is quite a remarkable fact, he's also the mayor of Hot Bay, and uh, he managed to organize his weather for us, so we do appreciate that, Jim. <laughs> but just the people on that list that contributed to the grass that we have, we're very grateful for it. One we had in Kev by Justin Harvey, Hazel McQueen, Lindsay, Brad, Ben Rensburg, Louise, Trevor, Adam Whittington, Lisa Scott, Neil Raymer, Corin Clifford, Darrell Wood, and Andrew Bergman. <coughs> Thanks guys, I promise you, you can't believe how nice it's cross. We love this cross. Yeah. <laughs> all, you were well, our first tenant, and you put up with all sorts of stuff. You had a very unfinished flat. We appreciate, you never, never once gave us a hard time. We appreciate it. <coughs> and for all, everything you've done, you've been unbelievable. Uh, Andrew Kirkman, boys, you the second most gorgeous woman here today. <laughs> and to the, on, the two Andres from Hedden and from Resburg for the great friendship over the years. We do appreciate all the effort, all the support you've given me. Um, I just want to thank you for your great foundation over the years, you know, the, the start that you gave me in, in particular, um, the good perspective you gave me, the schools and university. Um, but mostly I'd like to thank you for the sense of adventure and uh, your, your spirit in terms of trying new things and, and getting out there and, and uh, you know, without, without your Pittsburgh, Jax and I, you know, we wouldn't have been able to experience the things that you gave us and, uh, you know, taking us all to the Lamuti Mountains, the Aquavanga Swamps and all these amazing destinations has uh, really kind of shown me what's out there and we, we, we like to push the boundaries a bit and thank you for that spirit, and I hope to take that through for years to come. So thanks, Dad, for, for that wonderful upbringing. Gorgeous, wonderful wife. <laughs> As Robert Burns said, grow old along with me, the best is yet to be. You are so gorgeous tonight, my love. And, uh, I'm honored to be a part of your life. And uh, there's so many things I love about you. There's so, so many things, and I don't want to go through it. But, <laughs> but, <laughs> you have been the most unbelievable support to me for so many years. Through my career, We've been through some tough times, or I've been through some tough times in my career, and you've been there to support me, and you believe in me, and you believe in what I do, and that means everything to me. Mm -hmm. We give you space, we, we, we both give each other space, and I think that's really, it's great, it's probably what we, who we are. But it's your adventurous spirit that I love about you the most. You have the most amazing, adventurous spirit. And without your support and without that spirit, I don't think we ever would have taken on this type of project together. We knew we wanted to be here in this amazing heart. But without your spirit and your ability to just say, well, okay, it's not finished, but it's, it's our life together and it's, it's important to us. Without your spirit, we would never have taken that step. So I love you for that. I love you now very much, and every day a little more. So, 
I would like to finish now and to ask you all to stand and drink a toast to Dion, the light of my life. <laughs> I'm a bit nervous, I'm going to have to read a little bit, if you don't mind. I'm shaking in my boot. <laughs> it's been an amazing day and an amazing evening and to have you all here. Briggs already thanked a lot of you, but we've been sort of cocooned in this bubble of love and um, positive thoughts and best wishes from all of you and it's been a very emotional couple of months leading up to this wedding and such a special night. And I hope you're all having a good time. You've all got a drink? Yeah. 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 I won't be too loud. <laughs> you might have I feel a little bit like an actress tonight at the Oscars. <laughs> <laughs> and I have my golden man. <laughs> Except I can't hold him in one hand. Very. <laughs> this has got to be the happiest I have ever been. Honestly, it is, it, it is the most amazing day. Before I get to you, this incredible man of mine, as with the Oscars, they are. Um, I know you've been through a lot of things, but I do need to do a few more. To all of you, as Greg has said, we are who we are because of all of you. And when we started planning this wedding, we decided together, we just, the most important thing was to have the right people here that made it. And uh, there was a choice of either having a very small, intimate wedding, but that was blown out of the waters very soon. We wanted to have as many of our true friends here, and you are all here with the exception of you who couldn't make it, but thank you, all of you, again, for being here. There are a few specific people that I would also just quickly like to mention who have been absolutely incredible to me and Greg these past couple of days. Um, Michaela, I think she's in left already. Matt, um, the other barman, and the help in the kitchen. Thank you. Short notice. You have come up and stepped to the plate and thank you for serving everybody and, and helping us. Thank you very much. The Kadeem is in the kitchen, I think, but she has exceeded, I think. There's, I was worried there wasn't going to be enough food, but she has taken care of you all. I hope you have eaten a lot, because I think there's more coming. Uh, she just took that complete stress of the food worries away from me and she wasn't really. Thank you very much, Becca Dean. Trevor. Our DJ. It's been really fun working with you. But leading up to now, he's made a lot of effort. He's made sure that we uh, approve of his playlist, and he's taken off the achy breaky fart, even though he's really happy about it. <laughs> and we hope to see all of you on the dance floor. Kathy, I know is going to be there. Careful, he flips people. Oh. <laughs> Ciao. Not in the street. Thank you. <laughs> Roberta, our fantastic photographer, Kara Brishel, thank you. You've been incredible. You feel like a good friend of ours already, and you've just blended in. And thanks for spending the day with us today as well. Thank you very much. Caroline Copeland, my makeup artist. <laughs> It's not going to get smudged with the tears, sorry, but I know you've got your little gang. <laughs> Follow me around, it puts me up. <laughs> Louise and Lisa, thank you. Unhesitating, just gave me your fairy lights and your fire lights. And Louise, where are you? You're officially a more fairy light freak than me. <laughs> I'm very envious of your stash, you might not get it back, thank you. <laughs> Michael and Desiree, Michael's partner, we, Greg and I were absolutely blown away by their generosity and coming together for us and putting up these tents and giving us the picket fences. Michael, I believe your dad did the picket fences. I want his number, we need paddock fences. <laughs> <laughs> Lindsay, not only a support
walked in the office and handling everything in this week of nightmare of running around and stressing, but you've been a great friend as well, so thank you very much, appreciate it. I love it. As you can tell, this isn't a very traditional wedding, um, and along with the unconventional things, I did away with um, the official long lines of the bridesmaids. Truth be known, there wasn't enough beats Material, tattered material to work out all the bridesmaids. So I let them come in their own outfits. Thank you very much. And a special note to my five very close friends who are asked to help me and be my wedding angels, which is very unusual, but they are all unique characters and they have been amazingly supportive of me. Jen, my special friend. Thank you for everything, especially for all the effort that you went to for my hen's party. To quote you, it was a poot. <laughs> <laughs> they sat me down in the middle of all the girls that were there, and uh, Jen said, I know you didn't want to strip her, but... <laughs> and down the stairs came Flavio. <laughs> and with that, my blood drained. <laughs> like, okay, my mother, my aunt, my <laughs> law, <laughs> how am I going to do this? And Flavio did a couple of dances around me, and thank goodness he wasn't a stripper. <laughs> he actually turned out to be a Cuban um, dance instructor. And I'm yeah, dancing yeah. in case you And I'll never forget him because hang on to your ladies, don't lose your ladies, don't lose your ladies. He's Italian. <laughs> Wonderful, we had such a great time. So thank you very much. And thank you for my special treat this morning, again on I. since we were 10 years old, as a Suzanne. She's gone from somewhere. It's been a great 12 years. <laughs> Being a steady friend, always been there, and such huge support and help. And without Barbara, we wouldn't be, wouldn't have got married on that beautiful farm. It was the perfect place for us. It was us. It was wonderful and very special. So thank you for organizing that with Janet. And I will Thank her as well. And Barbara is very talented. For, you, for those of you who don't know, she makes beautiful jewelry and she made this for me, which she looked at the dress briefly and she came up with this stunning. And she's very talented. And thanks for my mom's stuff as well. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> the, the next angel, Rochelle. I don't know where to start. Rochelle is incredible. She's a walking, talking directory of incredible contacts. I'm wavering help. She just comes up with stuff that I haven't even thought of and she has been amazing. Thank you very, very much. Very special. I um, it's so appreciative of your services with Roberta helping us with Roberta finding Roberta, who's incredible. For Candle the Bras. The flowers. Um, everything that she does may help me these last couple of days. Cammy. My gorgeous friend, who's flown in from the very cold UK to be here with me today and us today. She's a very special friend of mine, goes back a long way. Biggest heart, she has taken, she just arrived yesterday and just took over. She thought of things that I didn't think of and she did it without any fuss and she got stuff organized and thank you very much. And more especially, I feel stunning in this dress. Thank <laughs> you. 
My cousin is like my brother from another mother who thinks she's my mother. <laughs> <laughs> He's amazing, amazing, gorgeous, gorgeous cousin. And you are like a brother to me, and I love you dearly. And thank you for finally for the weekend. And, uh, and being our MC, which is a huge job, Shane. We bolted the toilets. Andrew. <laughs> Those of you who don't know, we went to France last year, two years ago. And my cousin got a bit thirsty with Andrew and a couple of others. And uh, we woke up at six in the morning with found the two of them. Andrew had a toilet seat around his neck. <laughs> my cousin had a plastic hat on. He's got a fetish for hats. Christmas, um, you'll see there's some pictures in our passage as well. He had a turban. He had a pizza box. Little Ella, she's still awake. Very much so. Ella, what a special little angel you've been today. Thank you, you look gorgeous. And you're very well behaved and you're beautiful. We love you lots. Thank you. <laughs> Jess, my new sister, who you're more like a friend than a sister. You have been amazing and very supportive and big heart and we love you dearly. Thank you for your speech today and thank you for all your support and help these past couple of days and years. The Hilton Greens and the Banyard family, you hardly like new family. I've known you for five and a half years and since the first time I met you, I felt like a daughter in your, in your circle of family and thank you so much for supporting both of us and caring and loving me as openly and, and welcoming as you have. Thank you. Gail, where's Gail? Yeah. Your, please. My new official brother in law. <laughs> I can only imagine what an amazing headmaster you must be back in the States. You have abundant energy that has just spilled over all of us these last couple of days since you've been here. And you've been, like Cammy, just, it just, everything happens with you and everything gets organized around us. And you've been, Taking a lot of weight on our shoulders, and we love you for that, and thank you very much. And we're sorry for Pippa and Tina, aren't you? Because he was here, lovely. My sister, my chambermaid. <laughs> <laughs> I joke, but my sister is my rock. Um, being the youngest, I've never felt alone my entire life because my sister has been at my side, looking after me, caring for me, picking up after me because I'm very busy. Just being a very good friend and companion, and thank you, I love you very much. Dad, Chris, we really thank you for the house, but over and above that, you've been very generous and loving and caring, and as Greg said, we couldn't have done this without you, but I know that you've been very supportive to me and very important to me, and thank you. Everything to you know, and all your generosity and care. Thank you for your speech today. Can everybody hear me? I sound like I'm very brave. My mum, does this quickly to thank not the least really, my mum. What a beautiful. She has no idea. She keeps thinking she's not, but you are the most beautiful woman. And I love you and thank you for everything that you are and for making me who I am and supporting me in everything I do and for loving Greg as much as you do. You're just a full of him in our family and it's meant a lot to me. Thank you for everything. My darling husband, Greg. <laughs> Lessons. I'll rather stick to my horses and saddles. It's much safer. <laughs> But over the past five years, my little Greg has truly grown and grown. It sounds very cheesy, but it's true. He is an amazing man and he astounds me every day with what he does and who he is. I love the fact that we can just be together um, quietly or chattering all night and it's good. We can pull funny faces at each other and we both understand it. That me. <laughs> People often say, gosh, you know, how do you get on? You work together, you live together, you do everything together. You know, don't you fight? Don't you, you know, get on each other's nerves? And we don't. Because we're good together, I think we do get along well and we, we give each other the space that we know when, when we need each other. He's my best friend. 
and love you. I love you for your gentle person. I love you for your compassion, your caring and loving soul. I love you for letting me be me and letting my hair be the tiger and letting me watch you. <laughs> <laughs> I love you for indulging in my passion for animals, and I love you even more for having <coughs> learned how to love them as well, as much as I do. Well, not as much as I do, but okay. <laughs> I love you for the space that you give me, and I know you mentioned that as well. But also be close by when I need you without having to ask you. I love you for your passion and your drive, your enthusiasm and your energy. I love your entrepreneurial spirit. I'm very, very proud of you. I'm proud to be your wife. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to raise my hand to the to the gorgeous golden man of mine, my little Oscar, my great, my Picking up the sound. I hope so. I hope so. Please, if you need to get yourself a drink, please do so. Because there will probably be a few laughs. Um, I spent a lot of time preparing for the speech. Hours and hours, slumped over the computer late at night after I put my baby girl to bed. Mowed the lawn, all that sort of stuff that hot day husbands seem to get their, wife, their wives to do. And um, truth be known, Dion, just sorry, before I go there, um, we didn't go to Mavericks, we didn't have a stripper. We also had a Brazilian dancer. <laughs> What's her name? Flavio. <laughs> I got it. Um, thanks a lot. <laughs> Greg was making some interesting comments earlier um, about Dion and, and Barbara Streisand, and I, I couldn't quite see the nose on her. Thank you. <laughs> um, so I'm not too sure where that was going, Chan, but uh, very interesting comments. Weird. Um, but, you know. Talking about you, there's plenty of people we can bring up, and Rod Stewart was one. Um, not necessarily how you look or how he looks, I mean, he's a lot older, not much older, but you know, you may have been a skibby for him at school. But he had said something about marriage, and it was interesting, um, you know, and I hope that this has never happened, but he, he said that instead of getting married again, he's going to find a woman that he does not like, and he's going to give her his house. So, <laughs> Dion, you mentioned um, a, a wonderful person, and I can't remember who it was because I was drinking at the bar, about um, growing old with you and the best years are yet to come. Um, that's wonderful if you meet them when they're young. Um, Greg is my older brother. Um, and, but, you know, I think he's fairly young for sort of. 52, but um, <laughs> so he's done particularly well. He's, he's actually played above the bar in, in, in gaining someone like you for his wife. So great congratulations, Dion. I'm pretty sorry about the age thing, but we'll get through that. Um, so that's even before my speech has begun. I know that Jackie spoke for about 15 minutes and Greg went on for about an hour. So, you know, if, if many of you have done the Berg, which I'm sure you have, so get used to it because your ass is going to be quite sore. <laughs> A few years ago, because Greg takes years to get things done, he asked me um, to be his best man. And I was his best, sorry, he was my best man a couple of years ago. And he asked me and I was overjoyed. Um, when you asked me, because uh, it's just a wonderful occasion to be back here in Cape Town. I know many of you have said that I haven't lost my yaw, and I haven't, um, but that's just uh, that's a choice you make. Having been involved in many weddings, I got to thinking, what are the duties of best man? I've been an MC and I've helped out, be this and that, and the next thing, but best man kind of eluded me. 
So being back in Cape Town last week, I decided to ask a few of Greg's close mates at the bachelor party. Um, I did some research, if you call it that, um, on asking them for some bits of information. And the advice I received was as follows. Don't be boring. Give a toast to the bridesmaid or matron of honor. Only if they're hot. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure the groom is safely returned home from the bachelor party. Give Greg and Dion marriage advice. And embarrass Greg as much as possible. <laughs> so I'll, I'll sort of try and go along those lines. Please bear with me um, as I read through about 12 pages of speech. <laughs> okay, all. I know that you've put a lot of effort into this wedding and this relationship. There's an old adage that says you cannot choose your friends, but you can, sorry, excuse me, you can choose your friends, but you cannot choose your family. Whoops, that was close. <coughs> in this respect, Greg has chosen very, very wisely for you and your entire family. Um, it's been wonderful meeting all of you over the years, and um, even today has been a wonderful find. So, Thank you so much, and Greg, you've done particularly well. Um, I'm going to split up here because I can't see what I'm doing. I don't know whether it's the drink or uh, just the bad light. Greg is an extremely lucky person because Graham Gaynor was not alone in her efforts. And I know that Dion has spoken about a number of people that has helped them out. Um, Dion has called this group of girls her wedding angels. Greg has also termed this group of girls another term, um, the chambermaids. And I've been very impressed with this group of chambermaids. Bob, Cammie, Mandy, Rochelle and Jen, you all came together to do a wonderful job today. And I know that I speak from experience in a lot of this, but thank you so much for everything you've done. So on behalf of Greg and Dion, um, one of my duties is to make a, a, a toast to the bridesmaids and matron if they're hot. I think they're extremely hot. Um, so please just join me, raise your glasses and drink a toast to Dion's wedding angels and Greg's chambermaids. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Very interesting concept. Um, Greg was returned safely home from his bachelor party on Saturday evening. So I'm now going to try to impart some words of wisdom from someone that's only been married for about four years. Marriage is tough to define. It's even tougher when you're in it. Um, but I managed to find some apt quotes and uh, interesting advice for the two of you. Let's start with the definition of marriage. After doing some Wikipedia and all that searching, um, marriage is an adventure. It's like going to war. <laughs> you, you can laugh, it's okay. Break the ice. The definition of a wife is someone who can't spot the garage door at 10 yards but can spot a blonde hair on your husband's jacket from about a mile away. <laughs> the definition of feminine instinct. This is one you've got to take notice of. The instinct that tells a woman that she's right, whether she's right or not. <laughs> the definition of a home is the place where the husband can say exactly what he feels, because no one's going to listen. <laughs> the definition of a perfect man is the man that your wife could have married. <laughs> and the definition of the honeymoon is that period between I do and you'd better. <laughs> Apparently, one of the reasons that men do get married or help to push them over the, that, that critical stage is, is um, that they can avoid to hold in their stomachs anymore. I know that this does not apply for Greg, as he's always been very conscious of his body and the weight that he'd like to lose. <laughs> In fact, as a baby, his nanny had a couple of nicknames for him, and um, the first one was Mafuta. 
which translate, translated loosely means fat one. And the other one is mubi, which loosely translated means ugly one. So we, we're extremely proud of the way he's turned out with, um, with the beginning of like that. Greg and Leon, while all these de definitions sound very funny, the truth is I have loved being married. And I believe it's brought out the best in me and our relationship. Don't get me wrong, I, I really did enjoy being single. It was great. Uh, but decided with marriage was the way to go, because of one main reason. I got very tired of completing my own sentences. Greggy, <laughs> your friends look up to you, and it was last Saturday evening at the bachelor party um, that Justin Harvey and I sat down for a quiet beer. And um, he asked me to mention that you know, I know a lot of people don't know this, but you had been one of the most feared bowlers in the Western Cape. In fact, as little as or recently as last year, he claimed the scalp of the legendary South African batsman Gary Kirsten. He really did. Give him a hand. <laughs> Rumours that Gary gave his wicket away to keep the game alive have not been substantiated. <laughs> Justin continued to tell me that Greg had recently taken to the field again and had bowled two overs. For any normal bowler, that would have been 12 balls. <laughs> Greg managed to deliver 23. <laughs> Six of his special deliveries failed to make it across to the other side of the pitch. <laughs> Three of these delivers, the balls were delivered so badly he actually hit it on his own left foot and he went for 31 runs. I told Justin that I really didn't want to embarrass Greg so I wouldn't bring this up at the wedding. Greg and I actually go way back, way, way back, 30 years. And I have a lot to thank him for in that time. Our first fight was... Uh, over a homemade parachute he made it while being at St. Andrew's Prep on the backyard in Mulner Street. I have been the recipient of many hand-me-downs that have included clothing, toys, sports equipment, but more importantly, how to drink beer. And even more importantly than that, which drinking club to join while at Rhodes. Being a lot younger, I was always very jealous of Greg, as he always seemed to have everything. He was tall, Taller than me, doesn't count, but he was tall. <laughs> Confident, had blonde hair and dark eyes. He told me that the girls loved him. <laughs> but I recall All of the end of one holiday when he returned to Grahamstown from Johannesburg after spending time with his dad. And he had a pornographic, sorry, um, he, had, <laughs> he had a photographic portfolio of himself as he was trying to get his modeling career off the ground. <laughs> as a very young, impressionable brother, I thought, wow, he's come really far from being a fat, ugly baby. <laughs> I remember thinking, he just has it all. How can I compete? I actually have very little advice for you. But to say that from the moment I met Dion, I knew that you guys were perfect for each other. I also wondered, along with everyone else here, what the hell took you so long to get married? <laughs> Truthfully so. Life has a strange way of teaching us various things. Whether it be the highs of getting Gary Kirsten out, or planning, building and moving into your own house or the lows of bowling a 14 ball over and planning building and moving into your own house. <laughs> Life is one challenge, a great challenge. It's an opportunity is all around us. With the two of you together, the tough times become easier to take and the good times even more fruitful as, that, as you are able to share them together. Shit, I sound like my old man. I'm really sorry about that. <laughs> 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 the truth is, Greg, 
since being married, my golf handicap has gone the wrong way. My kayak has gathered dust in the garage. I've put on a few pies and find that drinking all night is something only nursing babies do. <laughs> a marriage is the toughest challenge I've ever had. But it's also been the best thing I've ever done. And I want to take this opportunity to thank you from my family and our family for inviting me here. And I want to just welcome you to our family, Dion, and tell you that you guys have the most amazing time ahead of you. It's going to be challenging, it's going to be tough, but we love you very much. You. Cheers.
to be mad. <laughs> I said there are a lot of wonderful girls on the dance floor. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, put that daddy's camera away.